Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today I think we've got a very special edition possibly in store. This puzzle on screen um, is the one that I think I've got the highest standard deviation in terms of testers responses for. Um, one tester um, had to bifurcate it, didn't like it very much. Um, one tester thought it was great but very very hard and the final tester thought it was a work of sublime genius. Um, so this, this is by uh, the constructor Samantha Mukherjee, uh, who sometimes compiles under the name Anu. Um, so if you've seen puzzles by Anu before, it might be the same person. Um, and I have to say, I am very much looking forward to this. It's a very, very original rule set. So I'm going to tell you about that in a moment and obviously aesthetically it's a gorgeous looking construction um, but firstly what do I need to do I need to announce the winners of our um, extra wallet competition so those of you who sent in your solutions and solution paths to Kurt Hugo Schneider's 6x6 thank you very much it's taken us a lot of time to go through them all many of them were utterly brilliant but I'm going to give uh, a shout out to to some of you now um, unfortunately these you didn't win the next few people um, so Judith Leister, uh, Lucas Stefanich, uh, Sam Kappelman Lines we liked your solution very much, Tyler Hinman we liked yours um, but the winner the winner is Tobias Hartung so well done Tobias um, you are the champion you get to you're gonna get the wallet we will uh, send you an email and explain what you need to do uh, this evening uh, so congratulations to you um, what we're probably going to do is to make some sort of mashup of the um, of the responses that we got because some of them some of them are brilliant uh, some of them are very amusing like the guy who said we had to give him the wallet so that he could um, he could make progress with his girlfriend um, and um, yeah there, there was a yeah just just a lot of quality um, now for those of you who maybe had a look at the puzzle and weren't sure how to solve it what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Kurt Hugo Schneider's um, actual solve, uh, his intended solution path on Patreon. So those of you who support us on Patreon, um, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to hear how Kurt thought about the puzzle, which is quite interesting, I think. Um, also on Patreon, but free, not behind the paywall, we're going to put Mark's latest solve of a cryptic crossword. So look out for that. That's not up there yet. Probably be a, probably be tonight or tomorrow that I'll I'll. I'll make the link there so just keep an eye on the patreon site for that um, but as I say that one will be free um, now what else oh check out Mark's video later on um, so what we've uh, what we've decided to do a video on is a puzzle that has got generated an extreme amount of interest on the community section of our YouTube channel it was uh, Sam Kappelman line 6x6 classic Sudoku it's had about 200 comments which is amazing um, and that puzzle, uh, I have solved it, it has a beautiful, beautiful logical path to it. So a number of the comments there saying it requires bifurcation, etc. No, no, it doesn't. And I think Mark's video will show you the beauty of that puzzle later on tonight. Obviously, we are trying to keep this schedule up of two videos a day during lockdown to keep everyone entertained. Um, now, let me tell you about the rules of this puzzle on screen. We've got, um, you can see, we've got some clues with numbers in them, in the corners. Now, what these numbers are telling us is the sum of all the cells connected by a knight's move with, with the clue. So th this 15 clue has to be the sum of those two squares, because these two squares can be reached by a chess knight jumping from uh, this cell to this square or to this square so these two would have to sum to 15 I guess these the 34 clue those ones would have to sum up to 34 the 60 that's going to take a lot of squares oops uh, ah. it's going to be those squares have all got to sum up to 60 um, now the other constraint that's operating in this puzzle is a king's move constraint now how does that work well imagine this square was a, a one now not only could all of these squares not be ones because of normal sudoku rules but because a king in chess could jump to this square and this square 
these squares also could not contain the number one. So this is a rather beautiful um, constraint um, that features in our Chess Sudoku app. So those of you who bought that, obviously you'll be familiar with this, this idea and it can lead to some very lovely patterns. Um, and hopefully this, this puzzle will exhibit those patterns for us. Now, if you want to have a go, and I, as I say, I definitely recommend it. I'm guessing that there's going to be a horribly hard start to this. Um, and, but, but, you know, it's a work of genius. So let, let's go with that. Let's hope we can find it. Um, click on the link under the video to play, play the puzzle. And with that, I'm going to have a go. Now let's get cracking and see how we do. Um, and in fact, when I was showing you the, the chess knight moves from this 34, I could see that we were going to be in business if I could actually press the right squares. Those four squares there have to add to 34. Well, you can see that they each share a column. So they we have to have different digits in these two squares and different digits in these two squares. So how can we possibly get to 34? Well, we're gonna to have to have eight and nine and eight and nine because eight and nine add up to 17. Two lots of 17, that's 34. So we get some progress straight away. Now I'm guessing that ha that hasn't held up any of the testers at all. This 15 clue now has to be a six or a seven along with the eight or the nine. 13 must be a four or a five. So we're doing okay so far now. What do we do next? The I'm sure this clue sees two of those squares, but no, that that's there's just too much latitude. That can't be where we go now. 10 clue here is too small. The 26 clue is too small. It's so there's eight degrees of freedom difference between a 34 clue and a 26 clue. So although there's only four squares in this 26 sum, there's too much latitude to really know what the options are. The 15 clue down here, that is a bit restricted, I guess. That's got to be six, seven, eight, and nine. Not that square, keep doing that. Um, this one's the symmetrical counterpart of this one. So is it this one? How on earth can we make this? No, I mean, I can see that we've got to get to 60 in these eight squares. So each of these sort of dyads is gonna to have to have an average of 15. So the average for each of the cells is seven and a half, which is quite a high number. Uh, there's something going on there, but I can't, it's not obvious to me how we use that. So what am I meant to do here? <laughs> How am I meant to make any progress? Um, ah, okay, well, we've got to remember there's a king's move constraint. So the it's not just true to say those two cells aren't the same. It's also this case those two squares are not the same. So whatever this one is will be the same as that one. So if this is a nine, that will have to be an eight. Ah, okay, so it... Yeah, it's something to do with this 60 clue. We, let's just have a think about this. We've got to... I'm gonna color these in. So you can see that this square and this square have a similar restriction operating on them. If we know that this these this is a pair of eight nines and there is a king's move constraint, then this square cannot be an eight or a nine. And we can see that if I put eight here and nine here, 
the 8 rules out this square from being an 8, the 9 rules out this square from being an 8, and if we reverse them we get the same effect. So this square is a maximum of a 7, and the same is true of that square. Problem is that's, I mean it's nice and all, but it's not I don't think it's enough. Well, I suppose actually if this was a 7 this would have to this would have to be a 6. So we'd get 13 here, 17 here. So we'd get 30 of the 60 that we need. So we'd be left if we take absolute maximum values from these four squares, we're left with still having to put 30 on the, in these four squares. Two of which are in the 26 clue. Uh, that does not, it's obviously sort of progress, but it's not, I don't quite see how to, ah, uh, now hang on, oh, I do see how to, I do see how to, this is very nice indeed, this is the trick, here, not, not here. This is the trick. Let's think about these two squares and ask ourselves the question, can there ever be an 8 or a 9 in either of those squares? Watch this. This is just, this is a lovely, lovely idea. This puzzle is now broken. Why? It's broken because of this box. Can you see why? I'm sure you can. Look, if I put an 8 in there, we know this square will be an 8. Now where do I put an 8 in this box? Isn't that clever? I can't put it anywhere there. This 8 sees that one. This 8 sees that one. It's impossible. The same is true of a 9. If we put an, It works exactly the same way. So these squares cannot be 8s or 9s. Now that... That is enough because... That means the maximum I can make these two cells is 6 and 7. The maximum I can make these two squares is 6 and 7. I've now got 26 in four squares, which means these four squares have got to sum up to 34. These add up to 17. I have to make those 8 and 9. Oh, that is just brilliant. That is brilliant setting. My goodness. Um, now, what do I do with that though? 20, yes, yes, the 26 clue. Oh yeah, in fact, it's, it's easy. The 26 clue uh, needs these two squares now to add up to 13 because I've got 13 already in those two squares. But look, I've got an eight, nine, eight, nine in those rows. So these also have to be sixes and... Oh, goodness me, I didn't mean to do that. Um, these two were eight and nine. This one, these two were eight and nine. And these two need to be six and seven. There we go. That makes this clue work. Now the ten clue, we need a three or a four in there. This clue must be an 8 or a 9 as well. So now, so now we've got 6, 7, 8, 9 in that one, 6, 7, 8, 9 in this one. Oh, Hang on, no, this clue, 41. Now I've already got 17 plus, I've already got 30. That means that this square, this square, this square, and this square have got to add up to 41 minus 30. So these, these add up to 11. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't think that's actually that helpful. 
this we've got the same restriction there look those add up to 30 so th these squares add up so these ones add up to 13 and these ones these sort of this subset of four over here add up to 11 and there's two common digits I still think there's a lot of latitude there So is it, it must be this one. We've not used, we've not used these two clues yet. So this one is that, 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 and that. Ah, no, hang on. Yeah, we can do something here. There's. Yeah, look, this one and this one have to be different because they chain through the grid. Look, if this is a six, now this one can't be a six because of the king's move constraint. So this one would be a six, which means this one can't be a six. So whatever we put in here is not in here, which means these two on this diagonal sum to 13, which means we st we're left with 20 for the other six cells around the 33. Uh, hang on, let's just try this. Just, just try that again. Hang on one second. So if this looks like that, this clue influences the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is clever. This is oh, there's communication here between everything. So yeah, in this situation, you can see that this square has to be a four to make the ten clue work, but this square forces this one to be a nine, which means this has to be an eight. Now, if we went the other way round, we get those. So these add up to twelve. Now, if we go the other way round, with this being a seven. What's going to happen is that one is going to get one bigger and this one is going to get one smaller. If this is a seven, remember this can't be a seven. This is going to be a six. So we get seven, six, seven, seven here. This would be a three. So we get three, nine rather than four, eight. So these always sum to 12. These always sum to 13. That gives 25, which means these squares add up to eight. Wow, which means they can't include a five because if there was a five in one of these squares, the other three squares would have to be one and we couldn't arrange the ones without them seeing each other. We could have a maximum of two ones in our eight total. So if the ones were there, these two squares would have to add up to six without using one so but they could be two threes or they could be four and two so these squares add up to add up to eight now we're going to have a similar thing here are we these add up to 17 because we know their polarity is different yeah, we've got the same thing, and these two must therefore sum to the same total, which you can see is going to have to be 11. So we're going to have 11 plus 17 is 28. So ah, so these sum up to 8 as well. Oh my goodness, so... <laughs> the symmetry in this puzzle is beyond belief. Well, okay, so we can start to do some logic here then, because there's no way either of these eight totals can be 1133 now, because if it's 1133, we get this pattern. And now down here, if these add up to four, these two squares have to add up to four without using ones and threes. Well, there's only one way of doing that. That's with two twos, and that breaks Sudoku. So that's not right. So... What other ways are there of making eight?
there's we could have one two two three or two one or sorry not two one or one one two four one one three three doesn't work what else is there five and three ones doesn't work I think that's it so and we can't obviously repeat that we can't have if we use one one if we use one one two four like this so let's just say it went like this how would we fill these two squares in you can see we'd need to we, we can't we can't we can't repeat the sum down here with trying to put uh, a two and a one down here because there's nowhere to put the one so what we know about right okay I'm getting my head around this now so we need one one two four for one of these sums and one two two three for the other sum now that is important because in each of those permutations there is a repeated digit and the repeated digit cannot go in the same box so in one of these the ones will be on a diagonal and in the other one the twos will be on the diagonal which means that these two squares must always contain a one and a two in some order whoa so this is a one and a two but we don't know which way round and up here one of them is going to be a two and a three and the other one is going to be a one and a four but we don't know which way round they go holy moly this is quite extraordinary ah ah now look the 41 clue this comes back because now these two squares can't contain a one or a two these have to add up to 11 this could be a minimum of three four in fact in fact given that's a five three six doesn't work oh this is so clever this can't be three six because that gives two ones in those squares so this is three four that means these squares add up to four to make eleven which means they must be one and three threes repeat look in row four and row six here so where are we going to put a three in row five it's going to have to be in one of those three squares and over this side we've got the 43 clue which meant those had to add up to 13 so these have to add up so these two have to add up to six given these two add up to seven So that could be one five or two and four. One five or two and four. Now probably we can tell which, but I can't immediately see how to do that. Oh, we've got an eight nine pair here now, so that's eight and nine. That gives us an eight nine pair here. Six seven is on the other side. I mean, have you ever seen a puzzle like this before? five now can't go in those squares so five must be in the column there and five must be in the row there so five can't be in any of those squares it can be uh, uh, same thing there five's got to be in one of those two squares ah, now that one's useful the fives here mean that squares are four that means that's a nine that's going to get everything so this is an eight. That's a nine. Eight, nine. Now the king's move, that's an eight. That means this one's a seven. This is a six. That's a seven. This is a six. This must be a nine, eight. Uh, that's a seven because of the six up here. This is a seven. This is a six. This is a seven. Oh my goodness. This is a six. This is a nine. That means that's a nine, look, because of the nines there. That must be a seven, similarly. The sevens are sort of the symmetrical opposite of the nines. 
Sevens must be in one of those two squares. My goodness. Oh, twos in one of those two means that where can we put a two in this box? It's got to be in the same square as the fives live in. So we get a two five pair here. So these squares now are going to have to be four, six and seven. That means that one's a six. This is a four, seven pair. Oh, that one means we've got a 10 clue there. I didn't see that. That's a three. Three, oh, threes now, look. Ah, this is important. The three is forced into one of those squares, which means that in terms of making these add up to eight, there must be a two in one of these squares as well. So we actually now know we've got a two, three pair here, which means these two have got to be the one, four pair. It's very windy in my room at the moment, so sorry about that if you can hear things squeaking. Um, threes must go in one of those squares. Two, three. Four, look, must be in one of those squares. We get a four, five pair, which means these two have got to be, what's that, one and eight? Oh, well, that's quite good, because that means that's an 8 and that's a 1. The 4 down here shifts the 3 in. There's so much symmetry here. This is 3, 5. So those ones have got to be 2 and 6, which again we can resolve. So we get a 1, 2 pair there. Six must live in the corner on the bottom left hand side. How do I do the last bit? I can't see what I've got pencil marked in there. That's not helpful. Oh, look, if we look along here, I've got six digits. I need three, eight and nine. Ah, that's an eight. So these two are three and nine in some order. So these are one, two, four, five, which we still haven't disambiguated. Three, nine, eight here. Let's have a look at this column. We now need one, two, four, and five. A three, of course, sees that square by the king's move. That's a two. This is a three, that's a two, that's a one. That's a one, that's a four. The three and the five get disambiguated. Threes, twos. What a puzzle this is. What a puzzle. One, two, four, five. This square has to be a two or a five because there's a one and a four in the row. That one can be one, four or five, I think. Two, four, or five. One, four, or five. Probably missing a king's move constraint somewhere here. Let's look at this one. We need one, three, four, and five. That could be anything. That can be one or three. Oh, one, three here. Oh, one, three, four here. This. That square can only be a five, I think. Can't be a one or a three because of the column. It can't be a four. That is a five, which means this can't be a five because of the king's move constraint. That's a five. So there's no two down here now and no five up here. Just wondering if we can do more with this one three pair. Threes. Ones it must be a one in one of those two positions. The one three pair sees the threes here, of course. I didn't spot that, but should have done. That three sees that square. Ah, that can't be a one now. Which square along here can be a one in column seven? It can only be that one. That forces this one to be a one.
five here fixes this as a four. Okay, so let's try and get this finished now. We're doing, doing okay. These two squares have got to be two and five. There's a two here. So that's two, that's five. That disambiguates the four, five because of the king's constraint. That disambiguates this column as well because of the king's constraint. This is absolutely startling. Absolutely startling. This must be a two now in the row. It's the only place that can be a two. And that fixes the 43 clue, does it? So I know this must be a four. That's a one, that's a five. That fixes the one and the three over on the other side. That shifts the three here. That must be a six. That fixes the six at the top. These squares have got to be two, four, and nine. That's a four, therefore. That's a two, and that's a nine. The four, seven gets fixed. The seven goes here. That's got to be an eight. Eight must shift down here. Go along with a seven, and we have a seven up here. I think I'm going to finish this now. Seven, eight, that square there, what's that going to be? A five, is it? That means there's a five here. Oh, no, it doesn't. I've already got a five in this box. That's absolute nonsense. Nearly made a mistake. Uh, four and eight into these squares. That means six and nine into those squares, which is now doable. That fixes the nine and the three. This square's got to be a three, and if I haven't made an error, I'm looking at one, two, it looks good. Uh, well, it's, it would be good if I filled in all the squares. Um, so let's do that and then check. Yes. Wow, I absolutely love that puzzle. That is a work, I mean, that is a work of art. That is a work of art. Anu, uh, thank you very much for sending it to us. Um, yeah, that is a memorable puzzle. Uh, uh, that will um, that will stay with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a long video because it wasn't it wasn't straightforward at all. Um, but one of the most original Sudoku's we've had in months. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.